right, so the rules that we will go through uh, differ based on the number or uh, what the coefficients are. Okay, but if your leading coefficient is a one, so I'll use that example that we just I just looked at. The process that you're going to use for this is called reverse foiling. Do you guys remember what foil means? Okay. What that means is if you took some binomial factors okay, and you uh, foiled them through. Okay, so foil means you multiply the first terms together, so that gives you an x squared. And you multiply the outer terms together, so that's n times x. Then you multiply the inner terms together, that's m times x. And then you multiply the last terms together, that's m times n. So if we kind of combine all of these, what we see here is the general form for foiling. Well, we're going to look at this in the reverse process. The reverse process means we're trying to identify a pattern that fits this information right here. Okay, so if we're looking to find binomial factors, okay, so two terms for our factors, that build up to this uh, trinomial. And the way that we do that is very simply, uh, we're going to look for the factors m and n, whose product is the last term, and whose sum is this middle term's coefficient. Okay? So when you reverse FOIL, the first term, again, this is for factoring a leading coefficient of 1, the first terms of each binomial factor is just going to be an x or whatever the variable happens to be. Okay, so in this particular case, our first term is going to be an x. Okay, our second term will be the values m and n. so that the product is equal to the last term of the trinomial. And their sum is equal to the, or in the sum, thank you. And the sum is equal to the middle term's coefficient. So when you look at this, what two, uh, what two factors of oops, oops, coefficient? What two factors of negative eight have a sum of plus seven? Eight. Eight. And now, when you look at this, so you have positive eight and a negative one. Do these have a product of negative eight? Yes. Do they have a sum of positive seven? So those are your solutions. That's the factors for that expression. Does that look familiar? Do you guys vaguely recall doing this by hand? Okay, so let's take another example. Okay, what about this? x squared minus 4x plus 3. Okay, if you take a look at the way this is set up, we're looking to see are there two factors of positive 3 whose sum is negative 4? So again, your first terms are x's, your second terms are going to be the factors of positive 3 whose sum is negative 4. And again, we can FOIL this to confirm. So we have x squared minus 3x minus 1x nets you negative 4x. And then minus 1 times a negative 3 gives you a plus 3. And so we confirm that we have the right solution. Okay. All right, so try this one.
All right, see if you can factor this expression, please. You able to do it quickly? Okay. So our first terms are x's. Are there two factors of positive 12 whose sum is the middle term's coefficient plus 7? Yeah, which ones? Plus 4 and plus 3. Okay, so that's what you need to be able to do uh, by hand on the quiz that you'll take next week. Does it matter which one is written? No. Okay. No, um, you are going to see. Uh, so the question was, does it matter which one is written first? It doesn't. Okay. Um, on some of your homework for this section, and I believe it's only this section, um, it may ask you to uh, write the factor that yields a lesser zero or root first. And so um, it's getting ahead of ourselves just a little bit, but um, if we were to set each of these factors equal to zero, what value, basically you're looking to find what value of x would make each factor equal to zero, and you're going to put the, uh, in that case, or in those, those handful of problems that ask you to be specific about it, uh, put the factor that yields the smaller number as its zero first. So on something like this, what value does x minus 1 yield as a 0? What root or 0? 1. And what about x plus 8? Negative 8. So which of those is a lesser number? Negative 8. So you would write x plus 8 first and then x minus 1 second, okay, and so on. So it's possible that you'll see something like that, okay, but it, on quizzes and tests and everything other than that, those handful of questions, it doesn't matter which one's written first. <laughs>